Thank you. Yes, sir. So we start with just general comments about the game, then we'll open up questions. Okay. All right. Um, well, first, uh, congrats to, to Mike and his team. Um, really good. Um, I think they're going to be a, a tough matchup, whoever plays them next. Uh, secondly, I think incredibly proud of my guys. Uh, you know, I, I think to fight back that late and then somehow get on with, with a minute to go, I think. But again, you look at that second half and and, and if you're looking for a team that way and, and keep pushing, I thought they did a fantastic job. So uh, really proud of my guys. Just want to say thank you to the staff and, and the squad and especially the seniors. I think if you look at the, what the seniors have done over the four years they've been here, I think it's four NCAA tournaments. I think it's three Sweet 16s, four conference titles. So uh, we've definitely... Uh, Really, I think we've raised the bar to another level, and, and now it's just a finding a way to get to a place like this to get a result. And, and, and again, I think we did more than enough to get a result today. And, and um, you know, people have been asking me about that eight and nine seed and, and whether, you know, that makes a difference. And I think that if you get this game at home, I think it's a huge difference. And then I think there are four enormous calls. There's two in the first half and two in the second. And Sure, maybe not all four of them are penalties, but I think that if there's four, there's at least two of them and none of them come our way. So I think, again, there's a lot of pressure on referees and, and they have to do what they think is best. But I think that it's a very, very different game if it's played at our place. So, again, disappointed in the result, incredibly proud of the group, incredibly proud of the season that we've had. And we just have to find a way to reload and come back and do this again next year. Hey there, Johan. Uh, I guess just first off, obviously not the result that, right. that you guys, Thanks, guys. want. One more time, can you? Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try again. All right. Hey there, Johan. Sorry. Uh, obviously not the result you guys wanted uh, here tonight, but just the fact that you guys had not spent a ton of time this season playing from behind. We spent a lot of the match tonight trying to chase that goal, applying pressure. Just what did you think of, of you guys' efforts trying to chase that goal that, that eventually came there in the 85th? Yeah, no, I, I think one of the things that we've talked about, a strength of ours all year has been the depth and, and, and being able to interchange and to rotate guys in the front four and the front six. So I think that you saw that again today where you're right, we haven't been chasing too much. But I just think that when you're able to rotate that many guys and, and keep fresh legs on, I think that you just apply so much pressure to the opponent that eventually they're going to give you some chances. And we definitely got some chances today. And unfortunately, we were able to just put one in. But I think that, again, it just shows the character of the group that they're willing to do their part. And sometimes that means just playing 10 or 15 minutes until the next guy comes on. But I do think that that being able to play eight or nine guys in the front four just put a lot of pressure on Clemson. The way it ended, obviously, conceding goal there with about 68 seconds left, obviously pretty heartbreaking. Just What was the, the way that you addressed the guys in the locker room and, and what did you try and share with them here in just a couple minutes since the match has ended? Yeah, I don't think I'm, I'm the greatest in regards to speeches and that kind of stuff. So I, I think, you know, as a coach, you're kind of, you know, you're, you're playing every kick and, and you wanted to find some way to be on the field yourself. So I think after the game, when it ends the way it does with giving up a goal one minute to go, you know, I, I think it's really, really tough. And you could see on, on our team and you can see even on the staff's face that they were just, you know, they're shell shocked. We've worked so hard to get back in and then to give up a goal with that little time left. But I think, again, just going back to talking about the seniors, talking about what they had done. I even mentioned to them when I was hired 10 years ago, I was told that if I wanted a new contract, I had to make the NCAA tournament. And I think that, you know, we're so far past making the NCAA tournament. It's not even funny now. So I, again, for our guys in the knockout tournament, at some point it has to end. And we didn't want it to end today. And I think that we did more than enough for it not to end, but unfortunately it did. So I just, I hugged all the guys. I told them I love, and for the guys that are moving on, like whatever they need in life, but ever, you know, and at some point in the future, I'm, I'm happy to do whatever I can because those guys have given everything for the team. 
And lastly, you kind of hinted at it a couple of times, but just the fact that this is maybe the new norm for Kentucky men's soccer, the fact that you guys have made three Sweet 16s in four years, you know, even going back to 18 and making the, the quarterfinals. Just what do you think this says about where the program has come now in the last five years after you spent, you know, some time getting the building blocks in place once you yeah. first arrived in Lexington? No, I, I think it's a program that's well-respected. I think it's a program that's been somewhat successful. I think we've done fairly well in our own conference as well. But, you know, it, at Kentucky, it's not about making Sweet 16s or making the NCAA tournament. It's about winning the whole thing. And I, I think for, for me and for the staff and for the group, we just have to find a way now to, okay, so we've been there three times, but only one time we're able to get to a Elite Eight. And we have never gone any further than that. So if you're looking in, I'm sitting in, I don't know if it's the women's or men's soccer room, uh, locker room here, but you know, what Clemson has done, we want to do. We want to we want to get to a Final Four. We want to win a national championship. And I think that the really exciting part for me is that the administration at Kentucky, they give you everything that you need. And I think there's lots of places where you have to fundraise and there's all kinds of sacrifices that you have to make that I don't have to. So, you know, that's a really good thing, but it also then adds a little bit of pressure on the staff where, okay, now we've been here. Now, what do we need to do to find a way to get it to the next level? And I think, again, if you look at that first half, there are two unbelievable chances that we don't put in the net. One went wide uh, near post and one we curled wide far post. And I think Clemson maybe just have that one player when those key moments come that they're going to put the ball in the net. And, and they definitely did that with one minute to go. But I think for us, it's just we're really good. We have really good players. But I think that, you know, to make a real deep run, you need a special player and maybe we don't have enough attacking special players right now. Yeah, that's all I had for me. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any more questions for coach? Thanks, coach. Great. Thank you. Yes, sir. What is some general comments about the game? Okay. Um, obviously, very excited that we won the game. Uh, I, I uh, you know, take my hat off to Kentucky. They're an outstanding team, well coached, and uh, and played uh, exceptionally well. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, our game can be cruel at times. And um, I think that we've faced that in our last couple of games where it's been very, very difficult when we've outplayed teams. Um, but I think that the resilience and the resolve of our team uh, showed itself at the end of the game. <clears throat> but to be perfectly honest with you, you win that game because we're at home and because our crowd is here. And, you know, that, that's a very, very difficult game if it's on the road and um so thank you to the clemson faithful and you know I told my team that i believe in them and there's no re more reason to believe in them than what they just showed Coach, we touched on a little bit for what you did. Scott, what's your thoughts on the game today? 
Beautiful. I said a lot of that. That's why it was, you know, I told the guys at halftime, I said, this is a cracker of a game. This game is awesome. Right. And it's so fun to participate in those types of games. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that's what it was. It's, it's that and it's showed itself in so many different ways throughout the course of the year. And we're happy that we're moving on and we're the first Clemson team in the uh, in this decade to be able to play in quarterfinals. So we're proud of that. Um, the goal in particular, Alvaro touches through um, to get their own goal. What did you see on that play that allowed them to split the game? It came from the other side of the field, so I didn't see a lot. I, uh, you know, to be honest with you, Justin brought the ball forward, and uh, you know, I think Quinn reversed it back to him when I felt that we should have brought the ball uh, to the other side of the field and reversed it to Justin, and Justin slotted the pass to Alvo, who made a late run, which is. You know, it's something instinctual that a player does, and you've got to give Alvaro credit. And uh, you know, to be able to make that type of run after defending as well and as hard as he did throughout the course of the game, um, you know, you take your hat off to him. All right. Any question on Zoom? Yeah, I have one. Uh, if you guys can hear me, okay. Uh, thank you for the time, Micah. Appreciate it. Uh, I, I know you mentioned at the beginning just the importance of having home field and, and the, the, the value that the crowd provided you guys tonight. I know it's maybe not quantifiable on the scoreboard, but but just in what ways do you think being at home and having the support behind you tonight were able to, to lift you guys to what was ultimately a win? Yeah, I'm sorry. Who am I speaking with? Sorry, this is uh, Cameron Drummond with the Lexington Herald Leader. Hi, Cameron. Um, yeah, you know, my experience in the tournament tell, uh, you know, says that it's not who you play in the NCAA tournament, it's where you play. And that's why you want, you know, a high seed uh, because you're going to play really, really good teams. And Kentucky is a fine, fine team. Um, so, you know, I think that that's the difference in the, uh, in favor of the home team. Uh, I mean, that's sport in general, but I think that uh, when it comes to pressure mounted situations, and we had one tonight, um, I think that that makes such a, like you said, it's not quantifiable, but you know, if that game's on team in nature, our response was fantastic tonight and got us a winner. And it was a crowd to sir. Are there any other more questions from Zoom? Not good. Onward. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah.